Next, that's new news. We put it up on the alert. Let's bring in our market experts, Bob Froelich of DWS Investments, Peter Schiff, Euro-Pacific Capital, Jim LeCamp, RBC Wealth Management. Gentlemen, I want to ask you something, Peter Schiff. If nationalization is such a great idea, I mean, it reminds me, it's pre-Thatcher England, Western Europe, and the Soviet Union, Peter. But look at this. Britain is going to nationalize their banks. So you know what their banks did today? Lloyd's, down 31%. Barclays down close to 20%. Get this, RBS, Royal Bank of Scotland, the ADRs here in the States, down 69%. What the hell is so good about nationalizing banks? How's that going to fix our banking system and our stock market and our economy, Peter? You don't have to sell me, Larry. I'm on board with this. I, I thought mean, you I... were a big nationalizer. You're it's... a big government guy. <laughs> this is going to make it worse. You know, what I said last time I was on this program, most of the U.S. financials, probably all of them, are already worthless. There is no value whatsoever in the common stock of Citi or even Bank of America. All the value now rests in the preferred share that the government is accumulating. And every time these companies announce more and more losses and they get a bailout, the bailout isn't free. The government gets more preferred stock. So at the end of the day, there is no value in the common. Anybody who's buying stock in any of these financials, they might as well flush their money down the toilet. I There's mean, nothing there. You look at these numbers. Okay, State Street had terrible numbers. It turns out Custodial Bank, they own subprime and toxic assets. They're off 59%. PNC Financial, 42%. Bank of America, another winner, 29%. Nationalize them. Wells Fargo, 24. JP Morgan Chase, 21. Citigroup, 21. We're moving towards zero, Bob Froelich, on all these banks. What is up here? How do we get out of this? Well, you know, we know what got us into it. Uh, you know, it was a lot of greed, a lot of misunderstanding of risk, and a lot of leverage. And what's going to get us out of it is we have to have some confidence back in the system. The only way, the absolute only way you get confidence back is not nationalizing the banking system. It is segregating those toxic assets. I don't care what we call it, whether it's a resolution trust corporation part two or whatever. But to, in order to get the banks lent, they have money. They have money. How about let them go sheet. broke? To get them, they, they have money on their balance sheet. Just take a look. The money is there. Who said we just let have them go, bro? Me. Who, Let's who? have confidence by letting the incompetent companies fail so that we can have confidence in the new companies that emerge to take their place. What? Entrenching these incompetent managers does nothing to restore confidence. It does I, the I would opposite. agree, but the problem is we're not entrenching the incompetent managers. We already threw them out the door. No, we they're didn't. Gone. And no, then no, we, we didn't. Just just we took a couple, of, a couple of big well, guys city left, they are, but, but they're city. all still there. They're still there. The guy at B still there. Jen LeCamp, let me bring you in. I want to raise a different subject, okay? Let's move on from banks. One of the amazing things today, in a, a terrible down day, where all the cyclicals, Jim, all the pro-growth cyclical sectors, which had been performing well off the November 20 bottom, they got slammed again, plus the financials. But we're talking about retailers, uh, commodities, tech, industrials, energy. Now, Jimmy, construction and engineering. All right, Obama spends two paragraphs today talking about his infrastructure play, they got killed. They got slaughtered. They were down 8% today, and they were down, they're now down 13% from the peak. And let me walk through this. Shaw Group off 13%, URS off 9%, Jacobs off 9%, Flora off 7%. Now, we all on Wall Street, or all Wall Street, I don't like the word we, was counting on the construction infrastructure play. This getting clobbered right now. Why is that? There's two reasons. Wall Street saying loud and clear they do not like the new plans coming in. And if Wall Street says it loud and clear, he may have a harder time selling these plans. There's a lot of money involved, and a lot of Democrats have exp expressed displeasure with the size of this plan. Beyond that, Larry, there's $150 billion in hedge fund redemptions that occurred last month. I think there's still a tremendous amount of forced sales going on on Wall well, why Street. Why are they selling Marching infrastructure calls. stocks? Why are they selling infrastructure? Look, I have because they think that the infrastructure program is vastly overrated. Government resource transfers do not create new jobs and wealth, at least in the long run. But everybody was convinced on Wall Street, everybody was convinced that infrastructure was the place to be. Now it's getting slammed. I'm trying to find out why. Why, why, why? The Wall, Street the is, Wall Street is saying they don't like the plans. Wall Street's saying very loud and clear they don't like the plans. And a lot of Democrats are saying, well, wait a minute, that really is too much money. So there's this growing 
I'm concerned no, 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 that he's going to have a hard time selling these money. plans. They're going to pour more money. You know what? I Peter mean, Schiff, a... Obama didn't even talk about his faux tax cuts today, Peter. Figure that out. Well, and I he think... had some class warfare specials well, about well-to-do people, prosperous people. Heaven forbid we should have rich people in this economy yeah, well, the, you know, who the are interesting... getting killed in this downturn anyway. Yeah. That couldn't have been good. Well, you know, the interesting part about his speech, he talks about shared sacrifice or rolling up our sleeves and getting back to work. But if you look at the meat of his, of his economic program, it's to get more credit to consumers so they can borrow and spend more money. How is that sacrifice? How is going to the mall and buying more stuff that you can't afford? Right. How is that asking for sacrifice? We're going to come back. We're going to lose Mr. LeCamp. Mr. LeCamp, big bear that you are, what's your favorite? What do you do right now? We're going to lose you to technology or something, uh, aerospace. What do you do here? You got to stick with bonds right now. The bondholders are going to get paid before the stockholders do. They're senior to it, and at least you get paid while you wait. Uh, the corporate bonds and municipal bonds are providing much better value right now than the stock market, so that's where you need to be. Do these preferred shares owned by the government come before or after the bonds of these banking companies? They they come. Uh, the the bonds are senior to the preferred. Right. No, oh, the bonds are senior to the preferred, so that's why right. you wanted people to buy them. But do you right. think these banks are going to stay the solvent? Are you talking, would you actually buy Citigroup bonds? Would you buy Bank of America bonds right now, Jim LeCamp? I think you could just find better value elsewhere. I, I have been looking at some of these financial per, uh, preferreds and these tarp preferreds, but I, I, I think you can find better value elsewhere, particularly in the municipal market. All right, municipal bonds. Jim LeCamp, thank you, buddy. We'll see you later on. Uh, in the week. Bob Froelich's going to stay with us. Peter Schiff's going to stay with us. Coming up, CNBC's own auto czar. That's Phil LeBeau. He's got the latest on the Chrysler Fiat Alliance. Chrysler Fiat. Is that lose lose? I don't know. He'll tell us what it means for the big three and bailout nation. Get ready. Maybe we can bail out Fiat. Too. If you haven't already done so, join the Campaign for Liberty. www.campaignforliberty.com.